I'll go into the details when it comes to exploring the dynamics of the African continent. It follows weeks of unrest and protest action by activists in the kingdom of Eswatini. It seems the quest for democracy is far from over. Two more activists have been murdered, allegedly by a police officer this week. It comes after King Mswati III called a Sibaya to address reasons for the protest action in the country. A police officer has been charged with murder and was remanded in custody awaiting a hearing. To give us uh, more details on this, we speak to the head of international relations of Eswatini political party, Pudemo, Sponiso Mkabela. Very good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time. We're learning of two more deaths and uh, the description is uh, one that has been voiced and expressed by the families of those who have passed on saying that the manner in which it occurred besides the, the shock of the actual deaths but the manner in which it occurred is something that is still unbelievable. What exactly happened? Oh, <clears throat> okay. Good morning, um, Paul. Uh, maybe firstly, I, sh I should uh, explain the location or rather the locality, the locality in, in which this uh, made us uh, okay. Um, th there is a place called Lomahasha in the eastern part of Swaziland, which shares a border with Mozambique, a place which is, uh, I would say, uh, rural and does not subscribe to these uh, urban um, principles of your town council and stuff. So those people, they live through subsistence farming and, uh, you know, selling informal ways which they, they get from Mozambique. So it is a place which uh, you wouldn't expect to be politically conscious uh, uh, or rather uh, awake to the realities of the uh, politics of Switzerland. But it came as a surprise uh, when the people reacted to these matters. What happened was that uh, uh, there were these uh, two guys who questioned a police officer on why he, he, he shot at a young man or rather a young boy who was standing far uh, uh, away from the protesters during the June protest. Now, this young, young boy was just standing and watching, but the cop, the same cop actually who shot these two, the cop ran for this boy and shot him. As we are talking, this little boy is in hospital. So these two guys were literally shot for questioning the cop as to why did he shoot this innocent young man instead of shooting at the real uh, uh, culprits or rather the, the real protesters. So the cop uh, got angry and this became a political debate, just that they had to even discuss uh, about who, whether they, they pay allegiance to the king or not, and they absolutely uh, denounced the king. And the cop went straight for his gun at the police station and came to shoot them while they were attending a funeral. The killings come at a time when Eswatini is already facing a political crisis and the growing calls for democratic reform. Where, where to from now, especially um, considering this really, really, um, you know, shocking manner of, of, of execution? Where to now? I think there is, there is no stopping. I think uh, the answer to this question is that this is a train, this train of democracy is a train that is unstoppable. I think sometimes it will seem like this train is not moving, but uh, this train will be under a tunnel and still moving. As it happened, you know, the, the king thought that by calling Sibaya, he's calming down the situation. Uh, when, when actually this train was under a tunnel, but it keeps on moving and it won't stop. It seems that the people of Swaziland finally found uh, uh, themselves and they want what they really want. This stop, this train will not stop until it reaches a place called uh, freedom. Let's talk about the police now and the manner in which they operate. I mean, a, a few weeks ago, as I was live on air with one of our reporters, uh, Muril Masilela, who was in Eswatini, I asked a question about the whereabouts of King Mswati. And it was at that point that uh, police officers decided to stop the recording because he was answering questions about uh, King Mswati. The police, they are reported to... In terms of the orders, you know, where do the orders come from? Who do they report to? And 
what sort of accountability do they have when, when questioned about their actions? A very, very good question. That is where the, 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 the problem lies in. The fact that the title of the police service is Royal Eswatini Police. That is where the problem lies. Um, the police are here to protect and serve the king. Even their oath of office is to the king and his heirs. Their oath of office is not to the nation. That is where in the problem lies. As a result, the whole country of Eswatini is coming to this uh, place of, of Lomahash, or rather this village of Lomahash, today to bury one of these uh, slain uh, boys. And they are going to accompany the community of Lomahasha to submit a petition to the police uh, station where we question such things as those that you question right now. The first demand, actually, is amongst those demands is that it shouldn't be royal as what any police, but a Swaziland national police, which means it will serve the whole uh, nation. But on top of that, the first demand is that the police commissioner must retract his controversial statement, which, which said he is waging war against the citizens of Eswati. So basically, the police are hoist, hostile to the people. As we are organizing this march, we have done everything in our power to make sure that this march will be peaceful. Actually, yesterday we had a press briefing to update the nation on how we are going to ensure that this march is peaceful. But lo and behold, in the evening, there was a circulating statement threatening uh, the, the, the people who are coming from all over the country. There is an army checkpoint already that is checking all vehicles and buses that are coming to this small village, trying to stop this uh, battalion or rather contingent of people we, we, who are coming to, to Lomahasha to support the people of Lomahasha in this quest for, for justice and, and freedom. A week-long mission by SADC's uh, technical fact-finding uh, team ended on Thursday with a lot of mixed sentiment. What did you make of that intervention? I mean, you speak about no end in sight. Surely SADC has been roped in to try help and find a, a way forward here. <laughs> the less said about SADC, the better. I think we are better fighting for ourselves here. In fact, I get emotional when I talk about Troika and Sadak. We have been made fools. As the People's United Democratic Movement, it is unquestionable that we are the vanguard of the Swazi struggle. We lead the Swazi struggle. We are known world over. But Troika came here and sidelined the leadership of Pudemo. It was so shameful and embarrassing. We never knew where they were. We never knew when the meetings and the consultation would begin, only to find that they have been told by the very same government that we are a terrorist organization and they shouldn't uh, hear our views. So basically the government was the one who was picking and choosing for Troika who to consult and who to engage. Is that fair? No, it's not. So I, I don't think we'll get any help from Troika. And... You know, you, 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 you say that you're not confident that the assistance will come in. What are the other options? What are the other windows to explore? Um, especially, as I repeat it, you say that there's no end in sight to this. The option is for the people of Swaziland to keep on fighting for their freedom. After Loma Hasha, I believe that every constituent because we, 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 we have what you call Tingunda. The Tingunda of Loma Hasha has taken it upon itself to go and question the authorities, the police station, about uh, the whereabouts of the killers of these over 100 people who died in the two, three past weeks. And we know that all the constituencies will take it upon themselves to start questioning where these people who, who made that our brothers and sisters are. So it is a, a, a train that is not stopping. I know that uh, the whole of Swaziland will start uh, submitting petitions to those police stations in their locality. 
One, one good thing that, that is beginning to happen is that the local members of parliament, one by one, are starting to come out and embrace this pro-democracy movement. In Lomahasha yesterday, the member of parliament came out and said, after these killings, I think I have to take a stand. I'm tired of standing on the fence. Let me take a stand and, and stand with my people and say we want democracy now. So we are hoping that all the members of parliament uh, will disregard this uh, greed and opportunism of we're looking for ministerial positions and start declaring to the world that they stand with the people of Eswati. So those are our options. The options are to put more pressure internally. We know that the army is there to protect Mswati. We know that the police are there to protect Mswati. Actually, we have got the army deployed in each and every strategic place. But the people will keep on fighting. We are not going to give up. Mm -hmm. you, you speak about uh, being left out of a meeting with SADC. I also understand that the Swaziland Solidarity Network operating in exile in South Africa um, has also said that they reached out to the SADC team and, you know, they, they calls fell on deaf ears as well as uh, others, uh, other movements uh, in Eswatini. What is your position as the People United Democratic Movement in Eswatini? How are you operating? Are you still banned? Obviously, we, we are still banned, but uh, the People's United Democratic Movement is a very resilient and consistent organization. As I'm talking to you, I can be arrested for declaring that I'm a PUTEMO member. I can be arrested for wearing that PUTEMO member. But it has been a 36-year struggle, nonstop. Now, we know that it is not easy. We know that it, it will never be a, a bed of roses, but we keep on fighting. So we are banned. But we are the vanguard of this movement amidst all those difficulties and all those conditions. The youth of Eswatini um, are demanding change, and they want it now. And, you know, more or less on the same sentiment that, that you're expressing as you and I speak now. And, um, you know, what, what really will it take, you know, because we've spoken about the loss of lives. We, we've spoken about the impact that that's had uh, on, on their families and the position of the military when it comes to not shying away from, you know, killings. But uh, this is something that they haven't really admitted to when it comes to the actual figure um, of the people that have been killed. Yeah, the army has not taken responsibility. Actually, his majesty King and Swat, in his uh, speech uh, at Sibaya, actually accused his own people of being the killers of these uh, over 100 people. Now, it is really shameful that a leader of a country uh, will lament the loss of property but ignore the loss of lives. Now, our position, as I've said before, is that we are going to face this detector. We are going to fight this detector amidst all of this. We know that the order to kill our people came from the king. We know that there is a story of mercenaries going around, that mercenaries came into Southland to kill these people. Now, that, that one raises another question. If you are a strong country with a, a good army, how can people come from without and kill your own people? It means, once again, you are proving your weakness and illegitimacy as a leader, because there is a foreign army that can come to your country and kill people. This is a very, very sad situation. As I'm talking to you, we have a family of a very young boy of eight years whose brother is in hospital, killed by this same cop that we are discussing, sorry, uh, shot by this same cop that we are discussing, fighting for his life. Now, this boy, I, I just want to show you the extent to which the youth is willing to, to fight. This young boy, when we, we submitted the petition, uh, for, for the killing of these two boys on, on Sunday. He started uh, 
sort of supporting the protesters who were making the, the fire. And I asked him, why are you doing this? And he said, it's because the police shot my brother. Mm. Now, that, that is how deep this goes. They say every generation must find its mission in relative obscurity, either fulfill it or betray it in relative opposite. I think this generation has found its mission finally, and they are not going to betray this mission. And we know that the duty, or rather the first duty of every mm-hmm. nation is to liberate itself. It looks like the youth of Eswatini is the chosen generation, and it is a generation that will not be messed with, and this is the generation that will deliver freedom to the people of Thank Eswatini. you so much, uh, Sboni. So some really heart-breaking sentiments uh, coming out of uh, the situation in Eswatini.